This is Jeff Mucci with RCR Wireless News. We're reporting from CTI in Las Vegas, and we're here today with ADC. We have Tony LeFave, who runs the outdoor business for ADC, and we have John Spindler, who is VP of Product Management for the indoor business. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, I think I've heard, AD, I've heard of ADC for years, but I really don't know the history of ADC, the lineage of ADC. Can you maybe walk us through the history of ADC and how that is helping you today? Sure. Uh, ADC, actually, we're celebrating our 75th year. Um, and uh, really, through various businesses over those 75 years, but of most recent, uh, just a strong, strong connection to uh, all the Tier 1 carriers mm-hmm. in the U.S. and now growing uh, worldwide. Uh, ADC probably is known most people from our connectivity products. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are uh, a leader in fiber and, uh, and copper, electrical, mechanical, mm-hmm. interconnect products. Mm-hmm. And really it was products that sit at that, that edge of the, the network uh, okay. in the outside plant, uh, you know, as you get away from that core network. Mm-hmm. And ADC is looking into the next growth area, which is wireless, and we're really extending our expertise in that that edge of the market to now distribute wireless services with our DAS portfolio. Okay. And what acquisitions have, have you done over the past decade, if any? I think the most significant was the, the acquisition of LGC Wireless. Mm-hmm. And what that really has given ADC is now a leadership position uh, in this distributed antenna uh, space. Mm-hmm. ADC uh, had, since 1993, a very strong outdoor DAS system Mm -hmm. and was a leader in introducing digital RF into the network. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're now coupling that with uh, LGC, which is a leader in in in-building. And so now we are uniquely positioned to to really deliver that signal uh, of the macro infill to the buildings uh, really where where it's needed. Okay. My understanding is the Indoor business is a $5 billion industry, expected to be a $5 billion industry this year. Does That's that sound correct. about right? That's correct. Globally, $5 billion. Okay. Yeah. And the in-building business, uh, $500 million, mm-hmm. growing to be a couple billion dollars over the next couple of years? Yeah, the outdoor, exactly. Right. Okay, yeah. the outdoor yeah. business. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what are some of the key drivers for the growth? Let's start with the, the indoor business, and then we'll move over to the outdoor business. Um, well, I think uh, there's a couple things going on here. First of all, there's been two major usage shifts. Number one is from the outside to inside. So mm-hmm. people used to use their phones in their cars, old bag phones. It was all about <laughs> mobility, right? Right. Well, now it's not so much about mobility. It's about portability. And you'll see numbers where it says 70 80% of wireless calls these days are made in building, not outside. Mm -hmm. So there's one shift where it became more and more imperative to do in-building coverage because the outdoor network simply can't reach in-building on a consistent basis. They weren't built for that. I think the second thing is the shift of usage from voice to data. Right. So now you're looking at this huge explosion of data usage. I think AT&T has said their data usage has gone 5,000 times more than Mm -hmm. it was three years ago. Huge numbers. Data, again, think about data. Most data usage is uh, happening within facilities, particularly if you're talking about you know, a laptop on the wide area network. You're not standing on a street corner doing that. You're sitting in a conference room. You're sitting in an airport terminal doing that. So that's another big driver. And then couple all that with some of the capacity issues that carriers are facing today where they need to get very, very targeted capacity solutions in. Most of the capacity requirements are in either large public spaces with huge user densities like an airport or a mm-hmm. stadium or an arena or, um, you know, an enterprise space where you may have three, four, five hundred handsets in a particular enterprise space in a facility, mm-hmm. for instance. Mm-hmm. And how about on the outdoor system side? What are some of the key drivers you're seeing? Similarly, it's uh, data, and uh, there's multiple effects on data on the macro network. You're seeing the cell size shrink, so there's infill opportunities. Mm -hmm. Um, You're also seeing the need to have smaller cells to really handle the capacity, so cover a smaller population so that you can really give adequate uh, uh, data rates and capacity Mm -hmm. to to that user base. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then also it's proximity. So uh, what worked well from a big booming tower uh, doesn't work well. Uh, The wireless systems have always been uplink limited. 
it's becoming more apparent when you're really looking at high speed video or excuse me high speed data and video so you know those are the important drivers for uh, what we see as big growth in the outdoor mm -hmm. and earlier you mentioned um, some operators operating on multiple frequencies talk about why that's creating opportunities for ADC and how you see that um, operators having to deal with multi-frequencies changing in the future? Well, uh, you know, in the old days, all of eight years ago or so, every operator had one frequency band. Maybe it was 850 megahertz, maybe it was 1900 megahertz. Mm -hmm. Then over time, again, because uh, of the added users onto the networks and uh, burgeoning traffic on the mm -hmm. networks, they needed to add additional frequencies in. So you saw one new carrier go from 850 megahertz to, say, 850 and 1900 megahertz. Mm -hmm. Now there have been more off spectrum options, AWS spectrum, most recently 700 in the rollout there. So now all of a sudden you've moved to a model where a carrier has one frequency, to a model where a carrier has three frequencies, four frequencies they're dealing with. And this is going to continue as the crunch with spectrum uh, continues mm -hmm. and more spectrum is auctioned off. Um, what they require now are products or solutions that are multi-frequency capable and also multi-protocol capable because it, time marches on as well and they're moving through different new technologies, different protocols. So, you know, we see that as a real opportunity with the solution sets that we provide which are multi-frequency and multi-protocol mm -hmm. uh, capable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just going to, you know, John hit it. It's just this asset of all these frequencies. Uh, carriers really want mm -hmm. the flexibility to deliver services mm -hmm. and have the flexibility to change that service. And so when you look at the tr traditional models where it was a specific protocol type and frequency set was defining that coverage area, now you look at a DAS system, you can have all your frequencies covered, and we are independent of the, the protocol. So it gives great the carriers great flexibility not only to decide what they want to put over that frequency, but also make changes in the future as they see fit to, to manage the network. One of the things at RCR we like to talk about is humanizing technology. All this is pretty technical, and a lot of consumers don't understand why they're getting better coverage. Can you give us some specific outdoor examples of an implementation you've done or you've been a part of that really touches and changes the way people use their phones and, and devices? Sure. Uh, really, it's providing and extending that coverage and delivering the capacity. So primarily uh, dense urban areas have been our, our stronghold. Areas where a traditional tower wouldn't cover, mm -hmm. we're able to get that, that coverage and mm -hmm. then also now capacity down into that street level. Mm -hmm. Area that we see growth on is really suburban area. So users are expected when they're in their office, on their way home, in their car, in the car park, once they get into the house to be able to take that call and take that, that usage of that mobile mm -hmm. service all the way into that home. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing a, a growth in, in utilizing a DAS system now to deliver uh, that service uh, into the home. Mm -hmm. uh, it works well for the carriers because the DAS solution can hide well in the environment and they have the control now of, again, what service they want to deliver and control of their RF footprint. Mm -hmm. So they're able to now deliver into the home, provide a good usage experience for the users inside their home, uh, and have better control of the network. Can you give us an example of um, a, a public place where there's been an ADC deployment? Sure. Uh, John, actually, uh, why don't you talk about the, the Dolphin, the, the most yeah, recent? I, I mean, uh, <coughs> one of the most recent things we've done is the uh, Sun Life Stadium where the Super Bowl okay. is held. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, again, very much hits home with users because mm -hmm. think about the people at that event. What are they doing? They're texting their friends, hey, I'm at the Super Bowl, or they're trying to send pictures or short videos. Very common. Mm -hmm. You see some of the... Some of the um, information coming out of past Super Bowls and the huge amount of data mm -hmm. ramp up that they saw in those events. So we actually provided the solution at that stadium for a number of different carriers. Where we had a nice mix of both our in-building lower power product and our higher power outdoor product. We used okay. the lower power product in the seating areas and the concourses and, and suites. 
lower power because that had to be heavily sectorized and you had to deliver capacity to each of those seating sectors very specifically. Mm -hmm. So that was a great way to deliver that kind of capacity. With the higher power units, we used the higher power units for access and egress into the stadium and the out outdoor parking lot areas. Mm -hmm. But that's something where we absolutely, you know, touched the user experience, if you will, in that particular venue where people were actually able to send, you know, short video clips of the Who performing at halftime sure. or what have you. Mm -hmm. What new announcements have you made at CTI? Uh, this week we're announcing our, our latest uh, in-building DAS product called, it, product called Enrich Spectrum. It's in addition to a fairly robust portfolio that we already have. It's uh, a bit the fruits of the combination, as, as Tony alluded to earlier, of the LGC wireless heritage and the ADC heritage, mm -hmm. uh, bringing the strengths of those two entities together. The funda fundamentally, the Spectrum product is in response to some of the things that we've already talked about here today in terms of the proliferation of different frequencies and different mm -hmm. protocols that have to be handled in building. And also, I think, an, um, a move towards enterprises saying, you know, I want coverage and capacity for not only my prime carrier but other operators as well mm -hmm. because I have a whole uh, host of employees carrying handsets and I don't control whose handset right. they right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's the people are looking for today in solutions, be it carriers or enterprises, is they're looking for a platform that can handle multiple frequencies, multiple protocols, something that can grow in the future because, again, as we talked about, there'll be additional frequency spectrum mm -hmm. rolled out. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be caught without being able to support them on something you made, you made an investment in. And um, therefore, the product provides up to eight frequencies on that particular, any particular band that you want to use mm -hmm. on the product. Mm -hmm. It has a digital stage to it, so again, back to Tony's point about some of the heritage of ABC and the digital pieces of it, that digital stage over fiber allows you to run extremely long distances on fiber, up to 25, 30 miles. Mm -hmm. Great for campus environments where you right. may have very long stretches, either enterprise or um, university campuses. Mm -hmm. And another piece of it is that now we can handle a mixed environment with this product because the platform can handle not only low power remotes for in building, but it can also handle high power uh, flex weight prism remotes. So if you're an enterprise and you are putting in in building coverage for a couple of buildings which have an outdoor parking structure, mm -hmm. you off the same system can deploy a high power outdoor prism remote to cover that parking structure. Or if it's a campus, uh, do some hole fill for your outdoor mm -hmm. coverage. So I think that's a unique value proposition, proposition in the industry today. Okay. What, uh, what else can we uh, expect to see from ADC in 2010? Uh, you know, higher power units, um, just keep building uh, on the, the platform, as John mentioned, with more uh, frequencies, more services. And I think the other thing you're going to see is um, a significant amount of um, activity in the 700 megahertz rollout mm -hmm. space. Yep. We're seeing a lot of interest from the carriers in this space, mm -hmm. uh, and particularly in MIMO. Which right. is going to enhance two by two MIMO, which you know we believe is going to greatly enhance throughput and capacity, and something that carriers are very much going to be rolling out in their networks. And so this is a this is a huge um, opportunity for a lot of different players. Okay. New 4G rollout. Well, Tony, John, thanks for stopping by today. All right, thank, thank you. you.